Hey there everybody, it's Ben from Doc Pop, and I'm here to tell you today about a little project that I did yesterday. Since I'm already on summer vacation, I have a lot of free time, and I live in the basement, and I, I do whatever comes to mind. And yesterday I was watching an extra credits video um, while I was eating lunch, and it was talking about uh, why console specs aren't very important, and I'll link to that video in the description because that's a wonderful video, and I would very strongly recommend it to you. But in it, it mentioned the Nintendo Wii, and I remembered, hey, I own a Wii. Now, the Nintendo Wii, when it first came out, was a really big deal because it improved interaction between the player and the console. You could control things with more than just your fingers, and that was huge. But since, better console player interaction systems have come out, like the Kinect, and uh, even, even in just the the constraints of the Wii, new devices have come out in that line, namely the Wii U, and since since the Wii U is getting exclusive games, people are being forced to upgrade in order to play their Mario Kart. But not everybody has, so some people still have this old, kind of obsolete Wii sitting around their house, and with that comes Wii Remotes. So I got to thinking, how does the Wii communicate with the remote, and can we use that communication to connect the Wii Remote to a computer? Now, there are emulators for Wii on the computer that use real, real Wii remotes already, namely Dolphin. But, I kind of wanted to see how the Wii remote communicated with the computer, and if we could use that for our own diabolical purposes. So let's head over to the trusty whiteboard, and uh, I'll show you exactly how the Wii remote and the Wii communicate. Alright, we are back over here at the whiteboard, and uh, you can see I've done some preliminary doodling here. We've got our Wii console which is presumably lying on a side, and we've got over here the sensor bar, which is a little plastic doodad that sits on top of your television and interfaces with the Wii Remote, as pictured. Now, the, the sensor bar is kind of deceivingly titled, because in fact it is not a sensor, but it is a transmitter. The Wii Remote is the sensor. This black plastic part here has got a camera inside of it, which is looking for infrared light being emitted from the two sides of the sensor bar pictured here in red, which it wouldn't be. Now, the infrared LEDs are transmitting light, and the Wii remote is constantly looking for it, and that's how the Wii is able to detect where in space the remote is. See, look, over here, we've got our Wii remote, and the camera is pointing towards the sensor bar, so the Wii remote is able to detect, using its camera, that the lights are here and here, and using that information is able to triangulate its location by sending that information back to the Wii. It doesn't do any of this calculation on board, but even if it's sitting over here, boop, 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 see, it can still figure it out. And it does this for distance, too. Referring back to our purple lines, we can move the Wii remote way back here, and we can take these lines and still trace it to there, we can still see the lights, but it can tell because they're farther away, because they're smaller, that it is farther back over here than it was over here. So. Now, a quick thing I forgot to mention right about here is that you're actually able to take a look and see this sensor bar Wii remote interactivity in action. And you can do that by going to the sensitivity page of the sensor bar's settings in the Wii settings. You can, uh... Take your remote, you can twist it around, you can see it's inverted because we're seeing from the camera's point of view. The camera and the remote. Just twist it around, play with it, use plus and minus to change your sensitivity. I like to keep mine on four. Do all that cool stuff. You can even go as far as to cover the camera with your finger, and you can see that it'll stop. Now, unfortunately, at this point, my camera died mid sentence. But, I was able to snag this screenshot from the resulting video of the infrared LEDs inside of the sensor bar. They're visible on my camera and any camera, so take out your phone, open the camera app, and check yours out. So, in short, we figured out how the Wii Remote communicates with the sensor bar, but there's still a big question. I said multiple times that the Wii Remote is continuously re relaying information from its camera back to the Wii. And you'd assume that it would also be transmitting information from button presses and such back to the Wii and nunchuck joystick movement back to the Wii. But how does it do that? The answer is devilishly simple. Bluetooth. Now, the Wii Remote 
is a class compliant standard Bluetooth HID or human interface device. And that means that it can connect to the chipsets found in most modern laptops. And even if your computer doesn't have that chipset inside of it, you can buy a dongle from Radio Shack or Amazon for like $10. It's cheap, it's easy, and you can use your Wii Remote to control your computer. And we're going to do that by using two pieces of third-party software. Blue Soleil for connecting the Wii Remote to the computer because the Windows Bluetooth connection dialog isn't very efficient. doesn't work too well. And then the other piece of software we're going to be using is called Glove Pie, which, despite its ridiculous name, is a very useful piece of software. And that's what we're going to use to teach the computer how to interpret the input from the Wii Remote. So, uh, let's get to it. You can stop looking at my face now. All right, welcome to the computer. Here we are at Blue Soleil's website, which will be linked to in the description of this video where we're going to download Blue Soleil. Now, Blue Soleil is not free software, so you're going to be running a 30-day trial. You can see I'm currently running it. If I mouse over this, you can see evaluation copy, 2 megabytes of data only. Um, but for the time being, that's all we really need. We, can, we don't need more than 2 megabytes of data transfer, and after the 30 days, if you really want the software, you can purchase it, or there are other ways to get it. Um, I think if, if you know what I'm talking about, then you're probably going to try it, so go ahead. I know there are plenty of, plenty of sources out there for that kind of thing. But for the time being, we're going to use the demo. So we're going to go to Download Now. Um, you can see the software costs $28 US dollars. Um, so what you're going to do in order to download the demo of the software is you're going to register, which I've already done. So you can see you've got this email, password, preferred password, username, country, security code with a nice easy captcha, agree to the terms you use in privacy policy. See, I've already signed up. Once you do that, you'll sign in, you're going to confirm your email, all that jazz, and you're going to go back to this download page. What you're going to do is scroll down to the bottom. Now, don't worry about the accumulate points. That shouldn't give you a problem. In the rare event that it does, you can click down here to edit your personal profile, and it will uh, it will give you 20 accumulated points. So that should fix that right up. But I didn't have a problem with it. You shouldn't have a problem with it. And actually, I wound up using I wound up expending six accumulated points yesterday, so it should have been fine. Um, what happened, and the reason I expended six when the downloads are only for two, is that I downloaded the zip twice, but Google Chrome both times marked it as malicious software. However, when I downloaded the RAR, it didn't give me a problem, and then after installing the software, there wasn't any issue. So this is software is clean, I guarantee it, but you're going to want to download the RAR so that Chrome lets you keep your file. So once you've done that, you're going to install it, um, you're going to extract it, and then run the install exe try to find that for you. Uh, this is a different thing. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, I'm not sure why I did it that way. I'm going to go to Downloads, uh, IVT Blue Soleil. Here we go. Install and then run setup.exe. I think it's an exe. Um, it's either an exe or an MSI, but it's really not important. <sighs> now I'm curious. Yep, exe. Okay, doesn't matter. You run it, it's done. You don't really need to explore any of the rest of these files, because it's, it's all good. So now you're going to close it, once it's installed, and then it should appear in your taskbar down here. It's going to ask you to restart, too. I forgot to do that. Um, so you can click on this. You can click Display Classic View, and then we're shown Blue Soleil's software. I already had it open, so that wasn't going to work. But you can see over here, we've got our Wii Remote already connected up on mine, but I will sake of this tutorial. Remove it. <gasps> okay, so now, in order to pair the Wii Remote to the computer using Blue Soleil, we're going to hold down the 1 and 2 buttons on the Wii Remote simultaneously. All four of the LEDs at the bottom will start flashing continuously. It's now in Bluetooth pairing mode. So you double click on this little sun in the middle and this pops up. <gasps> you can click search services and it will determine what that's good for. It'll uh, give you a mouse what you're going to do is you're going to then get device name. You'll get Nintendo RVLCNT01. And then connect Bluetooth human interface device. You're not going to click pair because pair is going to ask you for an uh, access code that the Wii remote doesn't actually use. So you're just going to hit connect. Hang on a second. 
give me issues. Sometimes this will happen, so you cannot connect to the device. What you're going to do in this case is hold down 1 and 2 again. I looked and my LEDs had stopped flashing. So now it's in pairing mode again. You hit connect Bluetooth human interface device, and now it says it's connected. The next step, and this is crucial, don't forget it, is to click on this mouse icon up here so there's a box around it. So now that that's done, the Wii Remote is, pair is connected to the computer, so the next step is a little thing called Glove Pie. All right, here we are at the uh, homepage for Glove Pie, which is the software we're going to use to map the Wii Remote's buttons to the keyboard keys and the mouse input and all that good stuff. That's how we're going to make this control the computer. So, <coughs> what we're going to do is um, use this Glove Pi Programmable Input Emulator, Pi, originally for the Essential Reality P5 Virtual Reality Glove, Glove, um, to map stuff to the computer. Now, this guy's a little crazy in the head. He's a little psycho about, um, about green energy. So, you're welcome to read this on his website if you'd like website is just glovepie.org but in order to save you the trouble of going through this paragraph about how you're not allowed to download his software until you're running on 100% green power in order to save you that trouble I'm gonna link you directly to the download options page so you don't have to do that that's all gonna be in the that's all gonna be in the description so you're going to want to download Glove Pi 0.45 free from December 31st, 2011. Still works great. You click that, and it's going to download a zip. I've already got the zip, so I don't really need it. But you download that. Download it. You'll download that. You'll extract it. It'll take you to the place where I've extracted it. Yes, my desktop's a mess. Don't judge me. Um, I've extracted it onto the desktop in a folder called Glove Pi 0.45 free. So you're just going to extract the file and then run pyfree.exe. Now this is where things get interesting because this is where we are going to map the Wiimote buttons to different things on the computer. So I'll show you a little bit about how GlovePy works. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with programming, if there's a slash slash before something, it's a comment and won't be rec rec recognized as a command. But in this case, the way it works is the format is output device dot action equals input device dot action. Now that isn't a valid command, but it illustrates the format. So if I wanted to map the A button on the Wii Remote to my computer mouse's left click button, what I would do is I would type mouse dot and it would already suggest all this stuff for me I just have to press L you can click left button from the drop down double click it equals Wiimote dot A A button and now that that's done I can I'll make that a comment and now we're going to run this and without moving the mouse, I'm not touching the mouse, I'm going to press the A button on my Wii Remote, which, by the way, is no longer flashing all four LEDs. It's only showing one, because it's being used. You press the A button, and the, it clicks and stops the commit. It stops the system. Which is great. We've just coded our first command. But there's more we can do. We can, in fact, tell it to do all of this for us by using the GUI tab, Graphical User Interface tab. Now what you can do is you can choose manually what you want to... What you want to the output to emulate, what what computer action you want X Wii Remote function to do, but mm, that's a little difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to use detect output to emulate, and then without moving my mouse, because it'll register that, I'm going to just press the left mouse button, just like that. And now it is already selected, output device mouse, action left button. So to detect the input, click that and then you're going to press whatever button you want to map to it on the Wii Remote. And this time, I'm going to use B. So I press the B button on the Wii Remote. It's not seeming to work. Um, we get that problem sometimes. Um, we have that issue occasionally, where it, it just it continues checking for stuff. It just never stops. Um, let's try that again. Detect input.
I can single out which one represents that jab motion. And I can... See? Nunchuck looking at right watch. Ah, see? Nunchuck looking at right watch because it's sitting on its side. But I can go in here, I can take this and change it to... Stabbing on the Wiimote. And this is a good way to figure out the names of commands for things. Just hit apply, and now we've got in the untitled section, mouse.left button equals Wiimote dot what? Stabbing. This is not going very well. I apologize. But now, essentially, what we've got going on here is if I click run, I can stab with my Wii remote and it will stop the software, which is cool. That's really neat. Now we've got that figured out. Um, however, you don't really, you need, to, you need to know all this if you're going to continue playing with this in the future, but for the time being, I actually, I hadn't written this in my original file, and I'm going to copy that. What I have here is an existing script called Bengami underscores Minecraft ski. It's a .py file. No, hang on, that's save, my bad. Recent, here we go. So here's the file. And it's just a neat little, it's, it's an entire script for controlling Minecraft. That's what we're going to use to test this. And the way this is going to work is I can, I'm going to fire up Minecraft and show you all of this. Now, all this is entirely customizable. If there's something in my control scheme that you don't like using the techniques I've just showed you, you can, you can um, explore this. Um, you, can, you can change things around. If you don't like what I've mapped to different things, you can, you can change it. One thing I'd suggest you don't change is uh, looking around. Uh, or I took that back. You can change looking around, but it's going to be difficult because you have to change the entire code here. And this was a complicated code. I didn't even write this because I don't know the language well enough. I had to go look, at, look up a code for modulating the mouse position with the joystick. But I made it happen. So I'd suggest you keep that, look around with your joystick and the nunchuck, but the rest of it, you, you're absolutely welcome to change. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate this for you, and I'm actually going to go as far as to run the software right now. Control is completely given to the Wii Remote, and I'm moving my mouse around with my nunchuck. I'm going to go over, and I'm going to run the software using the Wii Remote. I'm not actually going to... not actually going to use the mouse to get there. I'm going to show you that this control scheme is universal. It's not limited to Minecraft. It works to control the computer. It's just happened to be mapped to buttons that Minecraft utilizes. You know? So I'll show you um, all of this. Just a second, once Minecraft is willing to behave. Huh, this is being really slow. I wonder why. Okay, we've recovered from our little uh, launcher crash there. I'm over here, I'm gonna run Minecraft in my Wiimote test world. Oh, okay, it's whatever. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna walk you through the uh, walk you through the different button mappings as they appear. <clears throat> In the in the code over there, code up here. <laughs> okay, so I actually just kind of broke my own rule. I showed you the escape key, which is the home button, and I've already showed you the looking around, which is the nunchuck joystick. Now to move, to move from side to side, you use the side to side arrows on the D-pad, and to move backwards, you use the down arrow. But moving forward is not the up arrow; it's the B button. And there's a reason for that. The reason that I mapped moving forward to the B button is that if I mapped the forward motion to the up arrow key, it would be impossible to fight things, fight mobs, because you'd be trying to hit the up arrow and the hit button, which is A, simultaneously. And that doesn't work, does it? So, as a result, I put the, uh, I put the forward motion on the B button so that you can walk and hit at the same time. Now, in order to, uh, but actually, but, uh, let me finish my clicking tirade here. Clicking is A to left click, and then the up arrow to right click. I don't have anything in my inventory yet, so I can't show you that. We'll, get, we'll come back to that. Uh, to scroll in your inventory, 
you uh, hit the plus arrow to move in that direction, the minus arrow to move in that direction. Just so you know, if you're mapping the, um, if you are mapping the keys again, and you change the uh, scroll, and you want to change it back, remember that uh, the mouse wheel up has to be minus, and wheel down has to be plus in order for them to move in this direction. Okay, escape key I showed you. It's home. Uh, nunchuck buttons. Okay, so to jump, Z. And you can fly if you're in creative by double tapping Z and then holding it. And then shift is C. Let's go back over to that tree over there because I'm going to fix it. Um, yes, so this one, there's a comment in the code about this. Uh, at the moment, the 1 and 2 buttons are mapped to pick block and inventory. And if you are playing in survival, pick block is going to do you absolutely zero good. See, here we go, placing with the, placing with the up arrow. Pick block is going to do you no good in survival, so there's a comment that tells you what to change and to what in order to substitute the pick block on button 1 to um, Q, to throw items for when you're playing survival, and that isn't going to help you. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You can, uh, take the, the controls get a little bit of, take a little bit of getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's, it's easy to do, and it's fun, and it's, it's better than using the keyboard layout, because you can kick back in your chair. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's about all there is, so I'm going to, uh, do the traditional doc pop exit, but it's going to take some time because I'm not in a super flat world, I found out from a previous take. So I'm going to tell you as many things as possible before I hit bedrock. So that just made things a lot easier. Uh, Jordan and I are going to be filming more BO episodes this summer, and there are going to be more coming soon anyway because oh, that cavern ruined everything. There are going to be more episodes soon anyway, because I have some that I just haven't edited yet, because I've been lazy. I think I might edit one of those today, actually, so you'll be getting new BO soon. Woo! Um, that's about all I really have to tell you. Uh, bye.